Hello, I'm uh, doing another video. This is another simulation on a nuclear war. war. Um, somebody pointed out in my last video that I was pronouncing nuclear wrong. I was pronouncing it nuclear or nuclear or nuclear. I don't know, I can't even do it. Um, and so I'm probably still pr mispronouncing it, but I did find out it's supposed to be nuclear, uh, nuclear war. Anyways, this is a simulation, and in the original one, it represented a escalation in Ukraine where Russia started with tactical nuclear strike, and the United States hit back with conventional weapons, and eventually it escalated into all-out um, strikes. And it was mainly between NATO and Russia. A lot of requests were about China and some other places being left off. Well, this one is going to represent really in worst case scenario where for whatever reason things escalate and everybody says basically if we don't use them we're going to lose them so the united states starts striking russia and china and north korea north korea starts striking japan south korea and the united states Russia and China start striking each other as well as the United States. And of course, Britain and England get in on the phone. Israel starts striking Iran, India, Pakistan, and so on. So this is really worst case scenario. And then this one, I am going for complete counter value, which is striking population centers maximum terror versus counter force which is striking military targets generally the nations with the largest arsenals will tend to focus on counter force which is eliminating the enemy's ability to um, sustain military operations versus minimal deterrence which would be something like a france or the united kingdom or even china maybe up until recently would be going for counter value which is targeting cities causing maximum destruction um, and that's a really really um, basic knuckle dragger version of that I mean it's certainly a lot more complicated than that um, and also um, keep in mind that um, this only models immediate deaths radiation sickness stuff like this it doesn't model supply chain issues nuclear winter anything like that so just because this says certain people may have a higher probability of surviving doesn't mean that they're going to survive long term um, i think we saw through covid and numerous other things how easily supply chains get disrupted and one nuclear strike on a major port like in the united states would be absolutely devastating and you're talking medical supplies uh, numerous other things that would be heavy issues um, so this shouldn't give anybody a false sense of security simply because they live in an area that's not going to be prone to getting a strike that they're going to be okay um, even you know there's certainly different degrees of people as far as nuclear winter goes so let's leave that out of the equation just food production uh, medical supplies all those different things are going to be hugely impacted um, so this is simply about the survivability of the immediate effects and you know people find it's probably far more survivable than people thought in that aspect but this doesn't model long-term survivability so right now nothing's happening because nobody's actually doing anything so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start targeting United States of America so this thing target country so what I'm going for is 100% civilian as far as the percentage goes I'm gonna go 30% arsenal so Russia and then I'm gonna do the same for here and then for North Korea it's gonna be a little bit different I'm gonna drop this Twenty percent. Uh, 
I'm going to switch countries. I'm going to go for Russia. So Russia's going to go for the same thing. It's going to go for one of the less targets. So it's going to go for China, 40%. It's going to go for the United States, 40%. China. China's going to do a very similar thing. It's going to go 40. And really, after the first few strikes, the AI model kind of takes over a little bit. So what you'll see is they'll probably escalate pretty quickly to doing what they want. North Korea. So North Korea... Gonna do a mix. 30, 30, 30. And South Korea, Japan, United States. Probably not the smartest idea to be dropping nuclear bombs on your neighbor to the south like that, but it's probably not a smart idea to drop nuclear bombs at all. So so for India. We're going to see 50-50, Pakistan, China. Pakistan is going to see 100% interest in South. And we're going to see Israel. Israel is going to target. I'm going to leave France and Britain alone. They'll probably end up doing their own thing. So I placed people. And what I did was I put people to kind of simulate what's going to happen. I put them near where we live, where I work. I have various offices around this Ohio, Kentucky area. Also where family members are. Um, put one where me and my wife met couple down here where there's a convention I've had to go to uh, some family members in Los Angeles area and then I've also placed them in some various places around the world um, you look at some of my ancestry I have some from Yorkshire um, put somebody a couple people in London Belfast I have some my ancestry came from that region, uh, Germany, so a couple people there, and I threw a couple people in here in Russia. Um, it tends to be Scandinavia doesn't have too much. I have a lot of Scandinavian ancestry, but I don't, I don't get too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's start things off. See how it goes. Start kind of slow. So we see some stuff already taken off. It's a submarine launched nuclear missiles. So it looks like they're starting. Some ICBMs are starting. Let's take a look on the other side of the world. And we see they're starting to make some strikes too. So starting to sortie some of their jets, some more of our sub launches. You see it's ICBMs, you're seeing sub-launched nuclear missiles, those would be our Tridents, these would be our Minutemans. You're also seeing probably what's probably tactical strikes going on between Pakistan and India. North Korea seems to be launching some of their stuff. Israel is launching towards Iran. And so Britain and France hasn't done anything yet. But you see this is quickly starting to get pretty eventful. Gosh, I'm going to try to imagine 
if you were actually see Russia's already started launching all out so they're basically expending what anything else they have they're starting to go but the amount of I could just imagine people if they were able to see some of this coming I think I'm like this is it you know worst thing possible this would be destruction on a scale that humanity has never known before there are some sound effects if you go in close enough you kind of see that still haven't come to the United States but you see that that is a significant amount of stuff coming our subs are closer so the sub launched ones are hitting first um, and so are these ones here and the more local tactical ones that are a little faster you see there's a ton of intercontinental ones they take about 30 minutes in real time this is 10 times real time so that run a little slower than I normally do to build up suspense. You see some stuff's already striking. See right here just how much Denton, Texas, I've been there before. Shreveport. I may have just be coming in fast and furious, people. So we still have, I mean, we're just seeing a fraction of it. commenters earlier South America Latin America is definitely would be the place to be <laughs> Africa as well um, Australia again in this one scenario but I don't think they would come off scot-free just because of mil US military base sharing and other things and the concerns China would have about been being a, US, a springboard for U.S. activities. So we're still not out of the water yet. There's still a lot of stuff going on here. Slowing down a little bit, but people are using up and expending the last of their stuff. There's still going to be the um, airstrikes, strategic bombers, um, in this one, they do model Iran having a nuclear program. It's not entirely accurate, but it's interesting to see what would happen. So the United States is launching what remains of their arsenal. You see it's still a significant amount. I'm going to go a little faster get out any of these guys I apologize for that I'm trying to get a little motion sickness
So I'm a little bit more familiar with the American Arsenal, but these would probably be you know, B-52s. Um, B-52s have air-launched cruise missile nuclear with nuclear warheads. Nu nuclear warheads. Apologies. Um, we also have the B-2 stealth bomber. It's got the B-61 nuclear gravity bomb. And then Russia has their own strategic bombers, such as the 295, I believe, among others. Don't quote me on that, though. I'm not, I said off the top of my head, I'm not as familiar. So they've, looks like they've done most of their stuff. It's always a little weird how they do that when they've finished. So I'm going to run this for just a little bit longer. But I think right now we've seen about what we're going to see. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to calculate casualties from recent explosions. And then we can see casualties density, fallout, and even fires, which would be a major concern. Um, the bombs themselves will obviously kill people, incinerate people, and the immediate effects, but the fires afterwards would probably kill more people as long as the radiation sickness, the fallout. But you're going to see that it's still very survivable for many people. Just don't get that false sense because you're going to have extremely bad future. The more weapons you have go off, the more this calculating casualties takes a little bit of time. It's running a lot of calculations. Okay. Fatalities by country, a brief overview. 180 million for China, 48 million for Russia, 38 million for the United States, Iran, 17 million. Global cooling by 4.6 Celsius. Suit 64.3. If you look at it, you can see a breakdown by country and their casualties. So, first one of significance is going to be Canada. We see China with a significant loss. Total 328 million. Um, fatalities in the immediate aftermath. It's basically the United States population, give or take. Close enough. Uh, Finland lost 55, France 703. So that it looks like the most of the NATO countries didn't get hit that hard. Um, kind of looks like they stayed out of it for some extent. Germany 304,000, Guam 127,000, Hong Kong 775,000. India, 6 million. Iran, 17 million. Iraq, 1,500. Israel, 1 1.7 million. Japan, 3.2 million. Kazakhstan, 3.1 million. Kenya, 36,000. So, I'm sorry, that's not Kenya, that's Kazakhstan. Jordan is 3.1 million. I thought that Kazakhstan was really high casualties. <laughs> I was reading it wrong. Lithuania, 7,000. 118,000 in Mexico. So Latin America did not get completely free. That's the price you pay for living close to the United States. North Korea, 11 million. Pakistan, 6.5. Palestine, 632,000. Russia, 48 million. Saudi Arabia, 355, South Korea, 31,000, Switzerland, 182,000, Taiwan, 8,000, UAE, 8 million, United States of America, 38 million. All in all, it would be an absolutely devastating few hours for the uh, Earth. Um, 
Oh, look at fallout dose. You can see here major significant fallout patterns. Um, you can see here even where people have survived, there's still a significant risk. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the injuries there. Nothing, stable health. So this represents me driving home from one of my offices here and a slight radiation sickness, short-term reduction in the number of white blood cells. Dose, you know, decent, not fatal, but um, See casualty density, so Columbus, not as bad. Last time I did this, had some more losses with some family there, but um, where one of my family lives, but where is this one at? Louisville. Um, I'm sorry, that's closer to Jeffersonville. Um, obviously, didn't make it. A severe radiation sickness, cardiovascular and nervous system failure, almost certain death within two to four days. Um, you see here, you know, overall, it's saw here somebody in Los Angeles, but people that lived outside of there, like I said, they may not have got hit too hard with that. It all depends too. Are these bombs air bursts? Are they surface? Um, look at fires. You see the penetration of fires here. It could easily spread. Um, a lot of variables. This is just a simulation. It's obviously not real life, and um, it's going to be a lot more complicated in real life. Uh, so any of my kin that still for my ancestors in Yorkshire, not a good day at all. Looks like they're getting hit directly with something. Fires. So certainly not a good day for them. Um, surprisingly, the people I placed just randomly in Russia seem to be all right. Kind of got in between this. Um, Shanghai, maybe all right, not not doing great, but light injuries from glass and debris, first degree burns, not dead though. So radiation sickness. Death from infections and hemorrhage is likely within two to four weeks. So, they said just because it shows uh, not completely fatal doesn't mean you're not going to have some fun times. Looks like a low chance of death from infections. I'd say that probably chance of death from infections is going to be very high because they're probably not going to have any medical supplies. They're going to run out very quickly. Severe radiation sickness, cardiovascular, nervous system failure, almost certain death. So, that's it. Um, again, I'm going to run some more scenarios, upload some more videos. I have a lot of war game simulators, both the uh, map and paper kind and the um, PC kind. This is just one simulator. Like I said, it's not... A lot of people get so bent out of shape between whether something's a game or a simulator. I mean, it, to me, it's kind of childish to even argue between the two, but I try to specify that this which is really what I consider more of a strict simulator. It's not really a game. It's not like um, the older DEF CON and the other ICBM one, which was you try to cause more casualties to your enemies than this. This is really just tries to simulate the effects. I mean, you can put some game style aspects to it, but um, 
you know, it's interesting, and I hope, um, seems like in the last few years, there's been a kind of a lessening attitude among people about um, strategic level weapons like this and their effects. I've even heard people say, well, you know, I'm sure the United States has stuff that will prevent, you know, a Russian nu nuclear strike against the United States, and, you know, whereas we do have a limited amount of ballistic missile defense. The idea that we could stop a all-out retaliatory strike is fanciful, to say the least. Uh, people just have a very poor understanding of it, and a poor understanding that even what a limited amount of um, higher yield weapons, what kind of devastation that could cause. Um, you know, part of my job is in my regular life is um, for you know public utilities and going through tornadoes and, ha and floods and um, numerous things like that and restoring utility services, it's very, very difficult when you see devastation like that. And that would be like a walk in a park compared to the kind of devastation we see from nuclear attacks and the effects of nuclear attacks. I apologize if I keep saying it wrong. Anyways, that's all. And uh, I will post another one. Please uh, like, subscribe one of that stuff if you want to if you don't I mean I don't feel like uh, I'm not one of those people who you know just do this for fun I'm not trying to make money or anything off of it so that's it have a good night